I've got a 12 pound brisket in there that's been smoking overnight. It's probably got about another three, four hours left to go. So let's get inside and I'll show you how I cook my collard greens. Based on where you grew up, some of these ingredients will vary. And the best part about cooking is adjusting the recipe to make it your own. To date, these are my basic ingredients that I've come to love in my collard greens. The collard greens can be purchased year round, but they're tastier in the cold months, especially January through April. When selecting your greens, be sure to pay close attention to the leaves. They shouldn't be too tough or soggy. This will ensure the leaves are easy to pull away from the stem when we prep them later to cook. Collard greens can hold a bit of sand during the harvesting process, so I prefer to submerge them and agitate my greens to loosen any grit. But rinsing them in cold water is also sufficient, otherwise you'll end up with a bit of silt at the bottom of your pot. Some folks like cooking the stems, but I prefer to remove mine, and I found this the most effective way. This can be one of the more tedious parts of the process, so I totally understand if you choose to leave the stems on. It's all personal choice. Now when cutting your greens, it's best to stack a few leaves together and roll them up as shown and cutting them about an inch or two wide. If you don't like the strips this creates, then make a final cut down the length after the strips are cut. I like greens to be a bit on the chunky side, so feel free to cut them as much or as little as you'd like. I'm a firm believer in having a rich, bold, and savory broth known also as pot liquor to simmer your greens in. In many ways, I think it's the most important part of the dish. I want to make sure that I infuse the taste of fresh onions, garlic, and that smoky ham flavor. This onion and the garlic are core ingredients that go into making a great base for your collard greens. As you may have noticed, I don't really measure and garlic is one of those ingredients that rely on preference, so use as much or as little as you like. I used three different cuts of ham to provide the rich, bold, and savory flavor in the broth. Since I don't live in the south anymore, finding some of the ingredients can be a bit hard to find. This is about one pound of smoked pork shoulder from U Singers, which is made in Milwaukee and known for the sausages. This cut of ham has its own unique smoky flavor that complements that of the ham hock and bacon. You'll want to make sure to cube this pork shoulder into about one inch cubes. Now we're going to move on to the bacon. We're going to simply cut it up into small pieces, probably about an inch or two wide. Don't worry about breaking it up any further though, as it'll break up in the pot on its own. You'll want to get the pot up to a medium heat before placing any ingredients in first. The bacon has a lot of grease in it, so I don't add any extra oil to my greens. You're going to cook this bacon down until it starts to brown. You're going to follow that up with the coarsely chopped onion and garlic. You're going to cook these down until the onion itself is semi-transparent. Add about 96 ounces of chicken broth to the pot and bring it to a boil. These are two 48 ounce containers and you'll notice that I pulled up and I cut a side tab to pour out and I use the primary opening more as a vent. This allows the broth to pour out faster and smoother. Once you got the broth boiling, you're going to add the smoked pork shoulder cubes, red pepper flakes, ham hock, and the apple cider vinegar. Use the red pepper flakes to taste. In this video, I used about two to three tablespoons. When it comes to the ham hocks, if you're cooking about five bundles of the collard greens, you'll want to use about two to three pieces of the ham hock for that amount of greens. I like the vinegar notes to come out a little more than the broth, so I poured in about two to three cups. Let the pot come up to a boil, and then let it simmer for about 20 minutes before adding your greens. Once you got the broth boiling, add your first batch of collard greens. You can put in a lot because they cook down pretty fast, but they don't wilt as much as spinach, so add the greens about every 10 minutes. You should save enough room to put in your black eyed peas and one last batch of greens.
Because the peas are packed in water and salt, they tend to release some starch when they're in the can. I like to rinse off my black-eyed peas to get off all that extra starch that was released when it was in the can before I add them to my greens. Once you finish rinsing the peas, go ahead and toss them into the pot. I like to make a layer of the black-eyed peas on top of most of the collard greens as they'll sink down in the pot as it simmers. Be sure to add your last batch of collard greens to the pot and let it simmer for about two to three hours. So the best way to know if your collard greens are done is the ham hocks. If the meat falls off the bone, they're good to go. As you can see in this case though, they needed another 30 minutes. Use this time to adjust the taste of your collard greens. Just remember to let the spoonful of the pot liquor cool before you taste it so you know if you should add more salt or not to the pot. I prefer to finish my collard greens with Louisiana brand hot sauce. I hope you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the collard greens as much as I do. And remember, the great thing about cooking is that there is no hard and fast rule. So please experiment with the ingredients or the proportions and make this dish your own.